It is Monday the 19th and I have taken the day off of work. Why? Because the shovel must be ridden. Brought it home Friday night. Haven't ridden. Well, there's mowers, so you know you're at my house. Anyway, I think they just take them for a drive every once in a while. But what I'm going to do today is sort of have a little fun, go on a little trip. I brought it 160 miles home, but I kind of want to put some more miles on it just to see if there's anything else I can notice. I've done a few things to the bike already we'll talk about, but uh, let's kick off a fun day in the saddle. First off, I admit what I'm doing is probably not a good idea. I'm heading out by myself. I mean, I have my phone and all that stuff, but you know, if you have a vintage bike, which 43 years old, I've already had somebody, let's not finish. It ain't new, okay? So I got a 43 year old shovel head touring bike I'm heading out on, uh, and I've already made a couple little tweaks to it. We'll go through those, but probably better plan would have been to have a buddy on their bike and this, that, and the other. You just never know, but um, let's show what I've already done because I already feel a little bit better about this. Not that I've felt bad before. That's all trash, don't judge me. Anyway, there she is. So yeah, so you might notice if you watched the video where I announced that we bought it, there's already been some changes. Uh, I uh, This is not permanent, and I didn't get rid of anything, of course. You know, everything's gonna be wrapped up and kept nice and safe. Uh, but I already took the tour pack off. Uh, I left that luggage rack because the seat is kind of made to go over it, and I didn't think the luggage rack was much of a problem, and it could be useful. I just didn't want the tour pack on it for right now. And those leg warmers that are not factory, I took those off. Uh, so those are already off, the tour pack's off, and oh, nothing I did. I kept all the original parts, don't freak out, but that is a late 90s, or mid 90s, I'm sorry, shift lever that I put on there. The heel and toe that was on there, which I believe is original, because it looked uh, <laughs> about that old, you know what I mean? Um, they were really close, they were not far apart. My boot would not fit between the heel and toe, and it just made it a pain in the ass. So I took those off, put on a, a 90s uh, longer shift lever so I can get my toe under it, and uh, here comes another goddamn mower. All right, he's gone now. So I took those original heel toe off and put on that mid 90s uh, longer shift lever so I got more room to dance because when I was riding at home, uh, again, it's about 160 miles uh, home, I, I was like kicking the heel and trying, I couldn't get my, it just, that was not exactly fun. Uh, so that's fixed. So that's a little, little more ergonomic for my largeness. Uh, I also did rig up my clockworks. I like these a lot. My clockworks IO mount for my phone. Why? Because I don't know where I am. Even though I've lived in South Florida for 13 years now, I'm lost all the time except for a couple locations. I don't know why. When I moved away from St. Louis, my brain stopped accepting new information. Drop me in St. Louis today, I get you anywhere. I don't know why. Anyway, I'm always lost. So I put on my Clockworks I.O. mount so I can throw my phone on there so I can use it for GPS to find my way home. And my cigarette lighter, yes, it has a cigarette lighter. The power works for this little plug so I can power it and all that kind of crap. So, yes, a little bit of modernness that everyone's going to hate, but I'll find my damn way home. Uh, other than that, that's about it. I haven't done anything else. So, lowers, tour pack, shifter, phone mount real quick. This is a cool little booger. No, I don't have a code or anything like that, but Clockworks I.O. mount is really slick. So... Let's go out and hit the road and have a little fun on Gold Member. Actually, that's the wrong song. That's Goldfinger. But anyway, you know, it's Gold. <laughs> and that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. KC on the Sunshine Band. Oh, I'm not going to mic myself up, by the way. I, I hate that crap. I'm not going to do it. My helmet today is going to be that. But I will throw a, a 360 cam on the handlebar, so they'll be like, some ride footage and stuff, but I'm not going to talk to y'all while I'm riding. Why? Because rides are mine. See ya! Well, I wasn't prepared for that. I rode, uh, not like bike problem, but I rode from my house to Treasure Coast, taking the back way like I did with Jason uh, the day that I announced we we're gonna do this thing with vintage bikes. And it's a nice, I don't know, 60 miles each way, something like that. So I rode up there, grabbed a bunch of cleaning supplies because I was out, uh, and then thought, you know what? I'll run down to Palm Beach, Charlie, close to my house, just because a couple salespeople here I like a lot, and the uh, general manager, and I figured they'd dig the tour glide, so they'd like to see it, so. Road down here, and uh, 
They're closed. Evidently, I'm not knocking them, just didn't know this. Palm Beach Harley is closed Mondays and Tuesdays the remainder of the summer. That's interesting. So yeah, didn't know that was happening. But anyway, so let's go ahead and walk around the tour guide and talk about the stuff that I've learned and, and knew about, but just thought it was more, it's more fun now that I've put, I've got probably 300 miles on it since I bought it on Friday. And uh, it's little things that are different from a modern motorcycle that are, that are trippy and fun and, you know, things that I still want to change and things that I already have. So already talked about how I ditched the lowers and the tour pack, but you got to remember the time this bike was built, 1980, the country was rather different. You know, I mean, the national speed limit was 55 miles an hour. Hang on, this is not set. Yeah, so national speed limit was 55 miles an hour. And you can see there, 55 is hollow where everything else is a solid letter. So, yeah, national speed limit is 55, so it is geared as such. Even though this was a revolutionary bike and that it had a rubber-mounted motor and a five-speed transmission, still in fifth gear, 65 miles an hour, you're pulling 31-ish, 3150 in RPMs. So you don't want to go 80 on this thing like we do every day on a modern road glide. You're going to go 80, 85 mile an hour in South Florida. And you just don't want to do that on this guy. She'd be screaming. Um, as far as like rideability and stuff, it's not bad at all. The suspension's pretty decent, actually. Shockingly, I think it's got a nice ride. Doesn't float, but it's also not too stiff. Uh, vibration isn't bad once you get underway. Now, idling, yeah. The bars are shaking, mirrors are shaking. And when she's sitting still, you can't see anything out of the mirrors. But, you know, riding down the road... It's a really nice riding bike, you know, no issues at all. Uh, I already said before, I think that you gotta turn the headlights on on this bike, so you got ignition, and then you turn your lights on, and then accessory. So, you know, riding around with just my ignition on, technically I'm illegal, because I think in the state of Florida, if, if you have to have your lights on, I think all the time now on a, motor, on a motorcycle, not a car. But anyway, so I've been riding around with the headlights off, I haven't pulled over yet. Um, the turn signals, this is gonna blow your mind, maybe, you have to hold them in. There is no click on, click off. Uh, not like a Japanese a Euro bike where you go left or right and then click in. My 74 Honda was like that. My 74 Honda, I remember you clicked left, you clicked right, and you pushed in to click them off. But these, you have a turn signal button and you hold it on. See, it's there, she's on. My watch, you let go, that's when they go off. So you literally, it's kind of difficult. You don't, you don't have a lot of your turn signal on when you're making turns because you're clutching and braking and everything else and holding that turn signal button is not exactly second nature. But you know, it's interesting, right? So you gotta hold that on. It does oddly enough have hazards, although under here it says flashers. So if you flip that switch, you have to have the ignition on for it to happen, but you have hazard lights, which is something that I don't think they had for years after this bike. I think they ditched that, you know, and you stopped having hazard lights for a long time but it's got them um think of what else that i've noticed the sound of the bike really does sound good under load so when i'm accelerating off a stoplight it it really does sound good it's got a really nice rumble to it it's not super cracky it is rather quiet at idle though so again back to the whole pipe thing i'd mentioned this thing has uh wider baffled mufflers on it and i might want to change those out for a straight pipe but i don't know i mean it sounds good under load it just uh isn't loud enough for me at idle when you have the sound of a shovel head. You know, you think you want a little more noise to it. Uh, I poked around at Treasure Coast looking at accessories, and uh, I'll do a whole video on buying accessories for a vintage Harley, but taint nothing. <laughs> I knew that before I went because I looked at the website. So I'd poke around, but things like derby covers and timer covers and all that stuff, none of that stuff fits. Nothing fits a, a shovel head. You have to get online and, you know, Dennis Kirk it for that kind of stuff. They have it. They got all kinds of stuff for it, but we'll do a whole video on that. Uh, I got my highway pegs lined out, so that's good. Uh, oh, different here. Your oil is under that cover, but you still got your oil filler cap. There's a hole in it. Obviously, you're looking at it, and the dipstick sticks up through there. So you can add oil without taking the cover off, but the oil tank is under that cover. Uh, the funny thing is, under here, completely empty. Take the seat off. You're going to look all the way down in the bike. There's The battery's not there because the battery is here. Not inside the bag, but if you take here, I'll show you. Let me take the lid off. There, see? So the battery sits in a tray and the bag has a recess in it. Look at all the original uh, uh, decals. And the bags are they're fiberglass. They're not, you know, resin like they are today. But anyway, so the, the under here, if I took the bag off, you'd see this 
part has a jut out. So that's all under all this. So getting to the battery, I guess, isn't any more of a pain than it is today, honestly, because today's seat's got to come off, ECM's got to come off, the tray covering the ECM, you know, or I'm sorry, under the ECM's got to come off, all that stuff. But it's just, it's just really interesting, weird little stuff. These are quick, quick, uh, quick connects for the turn signals. Um, sorry, dude just walked in or rode in on a tiny little bike he's put Harley parts on. It's interesting, like little bitty jet bike, but it's got like a freaking Dyna, <laughs> Dyna rear fender and stuff on it. He's Dyna bro, a Japanese bike. But anyway, yeah, so back to the turn signal wiring. So one of the things I was concerned about is how is this wired up? You know, could you put stuff in the bag and knock the wires off? And not as much. I mean, there's a grommet there. You know, it's 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 not too bad. You can tell why they would have moved it onto the bar that would have been in the 80s. But but yeah, it's it's just bizarre that your turn signals are part of your saddlebag. So take the saddlebag off. You unhook this quick release plug here and those two pins right there. And then she lifts out just like you'd expect. But I realized something on the way here, coming to meet the wife a little in for, for a early dinner, late lunch, whatever you call it. And this bike transports me back. And I realized just now like what that sound is when you're in fourth or fifth digging deep on this thing, which every gear you're digging deep. When this thing was brand new, it had 60 horsepower to crank. So today it's probably 40-ish, right? But when I was a kid in 1990 on the way to Sturgis, my dad's two best friends, Bud and Daryl. Uh, Daryl was on his Heritage. Bud was on his Ultra Classic. Now, this was 1990 and Bud's bike was a couple years old. So it was probably a very, very early Evo, 85, 86. And um, my old man was driving a pickup truck with his Sportster in the back, everybody's gear and towing the pop-up camper that we were staying in. So dad sh drew the short straw and had to provide transportation for everyone's crap. So I'm in the truck and bored because I wanted to ride. I don't like it. I don't like being in the truck, it sucked. And one of the gas stops, <laughs> Bud, good man. That was his last Sturgis. He passed from cancer right after. Anyway, Bud goes, put that boy in the back of my bike. Don't keep him cooped up in that truck. And, and I jumped on the back of Bud's Ultra, and we finished the ride to Sturgis. Um, I don't know. We weren't that far into it and jumped on, but right in the back of his Ultra Classic. Now, an early Evo has a very similar kind of sound, and Bud had straight pipes on his. And, and in fifth gear, rolling it on when you first, you know, when you're passing a car or something, it's the same sound and that's why it makes me a little wispy riding this thing around but it's something well made it home without issue uh and i made it home before can you see that yeah that's about to tear us up in a little bit florida man it'll it'll uh florida man it'll uh rain like hell here in a little bit as it does every day we have like our afternoon hurricane but yeah so back to what i said earlier like this bike brings me back to a time when i was a kid uh even though yes i know it's a shovel and it's older it's just got that feeling of an older bike and I absolutely love it. Um, do I think it's reliable? Yeah, I really do. Like previous owner, Craig spent all that money lining out every little thing with it. And it, it really is running great. It, it, it's, it's when you come to a stop. Yeah. Rattle, squeak, squeak, rattle, rattle, bang, bang, rattle, rattle. But that's all like fairing and lids to the tour, the saddlebags, which have to line that out. Um, I realized something, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to contact, um, Advan Black, who, by the way, again, sponsors this whole thing. So, you know, I'm going to shout out to them every single video because it's worth it, right? So Advan Black, who makes stretch rear ends and all that sort of stuff, they gave me the seed money or lent me the seed money so that I can buy these bikes and enjoy them and stuff and do these videos. So, but I thought of something they can actually help me with, and that is they make saddlebag lids and all that stuff, right? So speaker lids, regular lids, all that stuff, color match stuff. Um, I'm going to have them send me a gasket kit. You know, the rubber lining that goes to with, a, with a modern brand new lid that they make and uh, use it to shore these up. I had some pieces here and kind of got, but it's not quite right. So I'm going to get a full Advan Black speaker lid, I'm sorry, saddlebag lid gasket kit from them. And I bet that'll fix it. So there's still a lot of things that are sort of universal. They use the same kind of gasket back then as it did now. It's just that these had rotten away. So uh, I used, again, some bits and pieces, but I need something better than that. So... I'll have them send me some stuff that'll line that out. Um, as far as parts fitment and stuff, some people have said, are you gonna be able to put parts on this that Ed Van Black makes? No, they don't go back that far. I mean, this is 1980. This, and also this, this model is super unique for about four years, 80 to 84 was not like anything else, right? So, ooh, Earl, it oil comes out of the oil bath that the chain is in. I'll do a whole video on that probably, but 
So no, there's not parts that you can buy from Ed Van Black or, or anyone else to do body stuff to this thing because everything's a bit unique, like that whole battery thing I showed earlier and all that stuff. So no, you can't put saddlebags on this uh, from a different year because you need that shape. Also, turn signals are part of the saddlebags, all that kind of stuff. But the gasket kit, I'm going to get from Advan to fix that. Um, and that's about it. So just wanted to sort of share with you my day in the saddle on this thing. And uh, we'll talk again real soon. I'll do a lot of stuff on this. So what else you want to know about it? Should we do a live stream just for Q&A? Um, what do you want to know? Changing the oil? I had someone say, please do a video on that oil bath chain. I'll do that. I'll do that just on that. It won't be very long, but I mean, I can see... <laughs> I can see already where that thing's going to leak. <laughs> you see this design, we'll do a video just on that. But that's it. So love y'all. Take care of each other out there. We'll talk real soon. Bye.